Hello, this is Will Faber, and we are continuing our session on developing the working trot with Fuego. Now, Fuego, I've already walked. You saw his lunge work, and I've left the walk off um, so that we can just go right to the trot work here. And I've gone, uh, and of course, I would have done a long walk with him, stretching him all the way down before I brought him up, before I ever asked him to trot. But once I did, then I'm going to start asking him to come up and down a little bit, whereas in the past, I've pretty much been leaving him all the way down and stretched out. Now, when he first starts off, he's a little tighter than I want him to be. He's pretty nicely going over his back, but it's a little tighter than I would like it to be. I want him to stretch out longer and start to swing with a slower stride. So that's almost my, um, my work with him. Now, however, you can see he's coming up quite nicely into the frame here without dropping his back. Slowed a little bit more than I might like but I'm going to let him right back down in the stretch again. But it, he did not drop his back out from underneath me. And once again, that's what I'm trying to point out to you all is how you go about transforming this horse or any horse into moving correctly. So if you have to slow the horse down to, in order to sit to the trot, for instance, you're, and, and you lose the working trot, well, very simply, the horse isn't ready to be set on. When you develop the back to the point where the back really gets slow and the horse really gets in that optimal position where the stride is as deep as it can be with the longest, slowest step, which is what we're always looking for, then we can sit quite easily without any problem whatsoever. So here you see how I'm able to bring him back up here. Once again, he slowed a little bit more than I would like installed. And one of the reasons why I go a little faster than I might want to do with this horse at times is because he tends to stall out. I will get to a certain phase with him, and then he'll kind of stall out. So I'm always trying to avoid that. So I don't want to go so slow that when you know, he'll start to suck his neck back and then quit on me. I want to keep that horse out in front of me, keep him active, keep him swinging and happy and not slow down too much. So here you can even see I brought him up a little bit and I can feel that it starts to shorten his uh, back legs up a little bit. He's not swinging through as much, so I'm going to let him right back down the stretch again once I get through the side. Simple leg yield, once again, always the beginnings. Always remember that you have to be able to leg yield before you can actually circle. So. Really, in my mind, the leg yield is, is, uh, is the first exercise that we do that's not just going in a straight line. Because once again, we can't really turn our circle until the horse can leg yield into the outside rein contact. So you can here see I brought him up and he slowed a little bit there, a little more than I would like him to do. But I'm sending him to through to here to see if I can get a little bit of a length in the stride, which I do pretty good. By the end of it, it develops pretty well. And so I just try to slow him down by stretching up and back with my upper body a little bit to slow him down. So I never have to grab hold with my hand. So you always want to use your upper body, you know. Yes, there is a perfect position when the horse is correct, and that's straight up and down. But if the horse is not correct, sometimes we have to get off of that center point and get behind the motion a little bit. Of course, we never want to ride ahead of the motion because then we would uh, likely fall off. So once again, you see how I shorten him. I bring up that pole. And once again, remember, he was a horse that was breaking at the third vertebrae. So I have to be very careful to bring the pole up and not let him drop over at that third or fourth vertebrae in the neck. Once again, I see here I try to work a little bit of a lengthening, but it's a little more than he could do. Kind of skips a beat on me there a little bit. Not too bad, but you can see how he's struggling to keep that rhythm there as I bring him up and try to make that turn. Once again, I straighten him back out and notice the shoulders leading in the leg yield and how easy it is for the horse to step under when that happens. And that's how it should always look, and even at the half pass. These days, if you see a lot of upper level riders, watch them in the half pass and look how hard it, with some of them it seems to be for the horse to get its own legs around and through. Well, that's because the horses are hollow. When you see that, the horses are almost hitting their hocks together in a half pass. That tells you how hollow the horse is because it's not reaching deep enough through and under, which is what we always want to have, whether that's in the leg yield, the shoulder in, or a half pass. So I kept him up there for a few minutes, and he did pretty well. There was a little bit of a struggle there for him at times. But I could feel him tiring out, so I let him come back to a walk and just stretch his neck all the way down and out again. And once again, notice how with these young horses how little time I spend stopping. When I'm ready to stop at the end, they're more than happy to stop. So we never get hung up on things like that. I find the biggest thing that... Uh, most people do too much of with young horses. They worry about stop. When if they worry about go, once you get a horse really going, um, when you're when you're done going, they're happy to stop, so to speak. 
Now that was nice. He came right back into a nice trot after that little walk break there. I'm happy with that. And he was responding nicely to me, pulling my shoulders up and back there and slowing down a little bit for me. And I'm not losing the back too much as I bring his neck there. Notice there's no break at the third vertebrae. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what was so difficult with all these horses, you know. I'm letting him come back. I could feel that he wanted to go to the bathroom, so I'm letting him come back to a walk. It is always a mistake, people, to start beating up horses and insist that they keep moving, you know, when they're trying to relieve themselves. You know, horses just naturally get used to being able to do that. Some of them can do it right away, and some of them just, you know, feel like they have to stop in order to do so. But you never want a horse to... Uh, to not relieve itself because it makes a big, and of course it always feels like they lift their back, so it actually frees their back if they actually can. And I do believe that it can lead to uh, horses colicking that don't. You know, I think horses, uh, we've seen a few that have become, uh, you know, they were beaten up so much for trying to go to the bathroom that they just go around the ring and they just can't go and that's a horrible feeling. You know, so you always want to just let them go. Don't make a don't make a big deal out of the little things. Just like if you were you were you were teaching your child, you know, if it makes some little mistake or doesn't understand something, you can't beat up an animal for understanding. And you know, in these kind of cases with most young horses that they feel like they need to stop, they don't understand that they can keep going because that's what not what they would do in nature unless they were running away from something, you know, where they're just you know losing their bowels in that way out of fear. But that's you know, when horses are out in pasture, they stop to go, right? Because they don't want it all over their own legs. So here he's coming back up into a nice trot. And that was pretty nice lengthening there. Now notice how everything now is starting to slow down. So now I'm being able to ride a little more with the motion of the horse and just letting it free. And look how much longer the neck comes out now. Now look at the speed I'm going now. Now the horse has just finally softened over his back. And now the rate of speed is much slower, and look how much longer and deeper out in front of me the neck becomes. And then when I bring it up, he even loses it a little less. So how lovely that is. Now we're starting to see him float and beginning to pick himself up a little bit. That is the front end being elevated. And once again, remember that the front end never becomes really elevated by pulling the horse up with your hands. All that does is make the horse heavy. And uh, you can make horses snap their legs up higher, but remember, snapping their legs up is not what dressage is all about. It's getting to engage and deepen and push off the ground, not snap their legs up. That's the basic difference between real dressage and, you know, the kind of bad horsemanship that ends up with things like Tennessee walkers. Really, really nice hair, how he slowed down. Now watch how easily I'm able to bring him up into a better place. Now here what I'm doing is just sitting for a couple of steps at a time just to, for him to begin to get the feel of my back. Sometimes what I'll do with young horses is just simply change the diagonal back and forth you know, on every stride just so they get used to feeling a little more weight. This horse isn't quite ready you know, for his back to be soft enough to keep that uh, soft uh, flexion in his hocks when I sit. So that's going to take a little more strength. So what I do is just do it a little bit at a time. It's going to like anything else. You don't expect the horse to suddenly, okay, now I'm going to throw in my stirrups and sit to the trot for an hour. You know, if you do, you have a horse with a very small stride and a very sore back every time, I guarantee you. And every time I see, you know, trainers giving people these hour-long lessons like this, you know, and you can see that the trainer, the student is in misery, the horse is in misery, you know, and uh, and, uh, you know, they think they've done something at the end, but, you know, it really has had no point. You know, I've seen a lot of people end up having to get uh, hip replacements because they were sitting to the trot wrong their whole life. You know, it's again, when the horse's back comes up and is really supportive, it's soft and it's easy. It doesn't hurt your back. And there's absolutely no point in doing it if it does. But once again, once you develop horse correctly and you feel that lift up through their upper body when you get into real collection, it just feels like the horses float you right up in the air. It's effortless to sit to the trot when, you're, when you are actually trying to sit to a trot that is actually suitable to be set on, if that makes any sense. I've seen so many people frustrated for years, you know, because they just can't figure out, like, why can't I sit to the trot on this horse? And they keep just slowing the horse down to be able to do it so the horse never develops, so nothing ever gets better. So once again, look how nice he is here, deep stretching. This is what I'm looking for, that total relaxation. Now I've been able to relax my body a lot more and I'm just like right there above the ball, floating along with the horse, just what I want to feel. He's carrying me, there's nothing out here. You know, there's trucks moving around over there and he's staying very, very nice. I bring him up right there. There's no break in the third vertebrae. That's exactly what I'm looking for right there. So this horse is, what, is the point at which I say he's well over the hump. He's coming up now. Uh, everything is just solidifying beautifully. His back is, you know, um, just made great progress.
and we are beginning to see a really beautiful top line that's going to enable him to be able to really collect in the not too distant future. You know, it's just slow in the beginning, but if people take their time with their horses when they're young, like these horses are, you'll have an animal that you can enjoy for years and years to come. That will be a true joy. And that's why you can't buy horses trained like this, because no one ever sells them. Because, you know, they're usually people that care enough about them to, you know, to guarantee them a life at the end of their working life. So, you know, you pretty much have to train one. Look how nicely he came up there. No change in the trot. Now look how much more he's brought up his uh, abdominal muscles right there. And that was exactly where I wanted him. I, saw, I felt him just all of a sudden he came up underneath me and it wasn't going to get any better than that. And I come back to a walk and let him stretch out. And that's his workout for today. So that was a total of about 11 minutes total in the trot work. And of course I'd walked him for about 10 minutes before I went into that. So total workout today of you know, 30, 35 minutes. That's about what it should take to work a horse correctly. This is Will Faber from Art to Ride. See you next time.